Alrighty, we got a mid-80s Motorola R2008D. This is the high standard frequency one with the heated oven. And uh, I guess this is um, my own personal piece of equipment here that I use a lot um, for a lot of servicing. And we've got a just an awful mess going on right now. Everything's everywhere. Um, kind of freaked out that this thing uh, wouldn't turn on because they're not fun to fix. Um, you know, a lot of the information on this is if you've got this problem here, it tells you just to replace the board. So there is some helpful hints out there across the uh, the boob tube land and, and other places. But um, your service manual does have some sort of inclination of things to check. And uh, this is the correct service manual for this model because the D-Series, the later model, is going to be different um, as far as power supplies and sections here and some other things kind of everywhere. So this uh, does have your uh, trunking and your cellular support, this model. It doesn't have the one option, though. Um, but yeah, this is a, a decent little guy here. Um, some back history on this thing. This thing had shipping damage on it in the past. Dropped, whatever the case is, as we can see in the back here. This is a little bit wonky here. Um, and I believe this one rail here for... This, um, uh, the RF, uh, can't remember the synthesizer or whatever this A9 card is. Anyways, um, there's two, uh, pop rivets here that broke off from the channel. Um, they're held in by a small, um, pin right now. But yeah, this thing doesn't move anywhere. It doesn't get shipped anywhere. I wasn't concerned about that. Uh, this was many years ago. So it had flawless operation for a few years. No problems. And, uh, now you click it on. I plug it in. Now I do get some AC lights lighting up here. I will get the AC and the oven ready light. So it means something's going on here, but when I flick it to the on position, it's unplugged right now. Uh, flick it to the on position, I get no uh, startup, boop. Don't get the system test and the checkered stuff. I get nothing. I get, get no display, get no uh, tracking lights going up and down, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't do a damn thing. So, we go into the service manual itself, or whatever we can call this guy. Um, you have a couple, uh, let's try not to lose my page here. Oh, man. Okay, good enough. We have a couple different procedures that we need to check here. So, power on, doesn't power on, no AC indication light, no, that's not us. No oven ready light, no, that's not us. Service system will, won't turn on, yeah, that's us. So we're checking a bunch of test points here on A4 and A3. Um, basically, so the uh, the control board A4 and the uh, A3, I think, is the battery charger guy here. So we have A3 battery charger, A4, which is kind of the all the smarts of the system here. So it checks for a lot of faults, whether it's a overcurrent under um, over voltage, under voltage, uh, all that stuff. So all that uh, special wonky here is uh, on A4. A5 is going to be our output card. So basically it's going to have some diodes on here. Um, it's going to have our, um, our transformer here for chopping. And then we go to A6. But so basically we are to the point now where I have voltages in on A4. So you go to check A4. And I have all those proper voltages, the 15 at test point three. I have five volts, yada, yada. I have all these things here. When I go to the output board, A5, okay, and I check for any shorts to ground, I'm good except for pin test point three. Test point three, I get like 0.4 or less ohms to ground, which you get some lead. Um, resistance in there. So it's it's an absolute dead short on uh, test point three. If we look at A5, test point three, like I was saying, this is our output board. Output board right here, it's our dotted section. We have a chopping transformer, we have some rectifiers, filters, and these are all these are all going to be um, Schottky uh, type diodes here. So they're going to be fast recovery, yada yada. Anyways, test point three. Should be plus 12 volts. We go to look at our little bit of a diagram here. 
Now it's A3. Move on down the line. Uh, we move down a little more. Okay, we're getting close here. So, A5, output board. All right, center tab, transformer, DC. All right, all right. Okay, here we go. So here is our transformer. We're getting our switching in here, and we're going to get some DC voltages out after we rectify them. We're going to filter it out, get those spikes out, make it cleaner. And then we're going to filter them with some pretty big caps here, so 6800 mics, 680 mic. I mean, these are you know, trying to take away all those nasty signals. Get us a nice clean. And then we do have a Zener built in here. Um, test point three. So on our card, we have pins 5, 6, and 7. They're all going to be the same. They're all connected together. But test point three, we can run on through here. And just real quick, if we look at test point three here, is it common that a capacitor can fail? Yes, it is. But this thing just didn't start up one day. And um, yeah. So anyways, we go ahead and we are testing basically from here to the grounding of the chassis. We're also can pull the card out and test from that pin to the ground of that card. And we follow through here and what do we get? We've got some diodes right here. We follow this line. We have, looks like CR10 and CR9. And what is this line here? It's a negative 12. So anyways, there's our two lines right here. This is the only spot, okay, where we can get an issue. It has to be feeding back through one of these diodes one of the diodes has failed, and we are basically getting flow, and we're getting back to ground here, most likely through, um, you know, one of these resistors here. So we shouldn't get any crossover between our negative rail and our 12 and our positive rail, the 12 volts, and I do believe that is what we're getting. So uh, let's go ahead and try to pull this card out here. I think I'm going to pause this for a second. I don't like to do in this one hand. So let me, uh, we're going to pull out A5, our output card, and uh, be right back. Alrighty, so the uh, output card is out of our chassis, and uh, here we go. So basically, there's our chopping transformer. We've got some very large filter caps here. We've got some inductors to kind of take out all the high-frequency uh, um, issues. And then we've got some diodes here, some diodes here, diodes here. So because, right off the bat, we got a plus 12, a negative 12, a plus 5, and a negative 5. I can just tell you right now that... This bridge of four and this bridge of four, one's going to be for 12, one's going to be for five without even getting into it. I already got into it, so we know exactly what's going on. Um, but here is our negative and, and positive 12 volt uh, rectifiers here. And as you can see, we do have a little bit of uh, uh, spike protection that goes across these guys. It kind of uh, levels out the voltages and there's basically a cap and a resistor across the line there. Um, these are not actually in the schematic and I haven't seen any back service notes so most likely they're having some issues with some um, asparagus shit popping stuff out uh, maybe inconsistencies and some voltages and they decided let's add this afterwards because as you can see CR3 CR4 there is nothing that indicates that they are going across there so not a big deal you find this so the only way to really test a uh, diode when they're in a circuit like this you're gonna have to pull a lead you can't really get any sort of good test here. So let's just show you what our issue is here. We're going to take test point three. And then we're just going to go to the ground of this. So if you imagine if this card was in its slot, we have our rails that slide across the side here. So this is going to be ground. And as you can see, pretty much just an absolute dead short. Now test point four... Or no, sorry, test point six is going to be the opposite side of this, so it's going to be our negative. So three, four, five, six. And it looks like we don't have a dead short. We've got about 200 ohms there. And if we look... Yep, so we got about 200 ohms there, so that yeah, seems okay. So what we need to do is uh, we're going to have to desolder CR3, CR4, and if we look at our schematic or our uh, diagram here, whatever the hell they call this, whatever. If we look at the picture, CR3, CR4, right here. 
CR10, CR9, that's going to correspond to our negative side of our 12 volts. So we're going to pull up just one end, doesn't matter which side, whichever side is going to be easier. And I've already done this already. Um, these are heavily soldered. There is a lot of fat meat on these guys, so you're going to have to use a pretty hot temperature of uh, your iron that was able to uh, really soak the heat away. Always add some fresh solder before you start desoldering stuff. It's, uh, this stuff doesn't like to be staying around for a long time. So let's just pull up this guy again. So I kind of popped him back in there just to show you. So now we've got both legs of these guys up. We have this end all the way across. And um, can I do this with one hand? Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. So we're going to put this on diode test mode. It's going to do a voltage drop across this guy. And we should see about eh, less than a 0.5 up to say 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's a shocky, you know, it's a low voltage drop. So on the one, we're going to see about a zero if this is a good diode. And then on the other way, or sorry, we should see open, my bad. So on this one, let's test this one first. So there's about that 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ish. Um, like I said, these are uh, low voltage drop uh, diodes. So uh, if we test the other way, we have an open. So that's going to be a good diode. If we go ahead and move over to this other diode, like I was trying to in the beginning. Basically dead short. And if we flip this around, so right now it should be totally open and it's totally shorted. So we have popped a diode in this guy. Does that mean that um, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this diode and plug this card back in and uh, power this unit up? Absolutely not. Okay, just because we found a failed part doesn't mean you go and start plugging this guy back in right away. We need to check down the line, okay? This might have not have been a symptom of just a spike and this could have been a symptom of something on that 12 volt rail that has caused this guy to open up. So we need to do a little bit more digging uh, before we say, hey, we're gonna have to replace these diodes and we're gonna do a uh, matching set here. So we're not gonna just replace the one, we will replace all four of these guys. Um, we will add the uh, protection across these things. I might even add the uh, just caps across to all of them there and we'll see. Um, so before this unit went bad and I catch myself doing this a few times here and there I'll be working on something and I will flip this to generate and without me thinking of what I'm doing I go to reach for the switch and I would go like this to the wrong switch now I did that the day before this thing stopped working and as soon as I realized that I turned it off I did a no-no I flipped it right back on I always always if I flipped something off I don't flip it back on right away you let it sit for a little bit okay you let stuff drain down and then you flip it back on I have no idea if that may have caused that diode to get weak and then the next time I turned this on it just popped I don't know because once I realized that I turned it off and I flipped it back on real quick like I just usually never do um, the spring came back on it did the self test it boop, everything went on and it continued working I continued using it um, the next following morning pfft, nothing so is it possible that I might have spiked this diode to its end of life possibly if you did if you were not aware of um, you know, older stuff or expensive stuff. Uh, if you turned it off, or maybe you accidentally turned it off, never just flip the damn thing right back on. Um, especially if you, you're doing it quick, like off on. That can cause a spike and that can cause expensive stuff. I mean, if you don't know how to repair these guys, this is an expensive deal, man. But you know what? 
nine times out of ten, if you're a smaller service shop and uh, you have one of these guys, you're going to attempt to repair it yourself. I mean, you're not some Joe Blow watching this video right now if you are. Um, you're going to attempt to try to repair this yourself because just shipping these things is a danger. Um, like I said, this thing was caused damage in shipping in the past. So, um, anyways, we do have a service center for calibration of these guys within about an hour and a half of where I am. And I would always just drive stuff to them. But, unfortunately, a repair on this guy... I mean, you're talking about 300 bucks minimum just for them to get it in there, open it up, and just do the simple testing of testing the voltages. And, okay, yeah, we found out we had a short. Okay, great. 300 bucks to replace, uh, you know, four diodes. But then we have to continue to test. They're not just going to throw parts in. So I'm hoping this video can help you out a little bit. We can kind of understand the process of diagnosis and not just popping parts in. So... We're going to go ahead and cut this out to part one of this video because this video can get pretty long. And uh, we did find the overall first failure. Is there other options? Um, I mean, are there other things that caused these uh, this one diode here to pop? It's possible. We do not know yet. We need to go and check out where pin five, six, and seven of this car. Where do they go next? So, um, we get it all. We, everything's in here. We're going to be able to figure out where everything goes and test the most common thing on that side that might have went. For instance, if these three rails right here that go connect in go into a very large, say, transistor, well, that's the first thing I'm checking is that transistor. Because spikes, stuff like that, could have taken a transistor out, which popped that diode too. So anyways, if you like the video, give me a good old thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing a somewhat of a decent job here explaining the beautiful R2008D slash HS.